friction was doubled. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, I, I was also looking at a couple things. I looked at cars, actually. Um, oils. I actually was looking at rock climbing to see if we could do, like, Spider-Man things. Yeah, I looked at that, um, too. But the way it. bugs climb and the way we climb and the way friction works uh, doesn't really help us rock climb very good, even if we have double friction. Like, rock climbing will be easier, but, like, not enough that I was excited about it. Mm-hmm. And so, as I sometimes do when I get stuck on a question, is I was like, what's my beach day going to look like? How's this going to affect <laughs> my summer day at the beach? And uh, so, the very first thing is, what is the sand going to be like? Um, and my scientific conclusion is the sand is going to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> is that a scientific term or? Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure so we're rigorous. The way, the way, um, soils work is that the strength of the soil and the way that it functions is based on its internal friction angle, which is not the friction. It's just basically if you would have it, uh, if there'd be like a landslide, it's like what angle that landslide could start off at. So basically, the long and short of it, doing some calculations, the friction angle of sand would go from its natural loose sand at 32 degrees to around 40 degrees. So what does that mean? Which means that instead of falling under the nice, loose, and happy sand category, it falls into the rough gravel territory. Oh, <laughs> So, like I said, it's going to be weird because it's going to still be, like, fine little sand grains, but they're really going to move and interact with you like rough gravel does. So, like, you're not going to sink oh. into it like that. And It'll just be more solid? That is, it's like, going to be more weird. solid. And I think it's just going to suck. Yeah. Because it's, like, like, co- like, think compacted sand, like, if, it, if you, like, beat it down a bunch and then, like, hit it, like, with your knees. Like, that sucks. Yeah. And... Um, along those lines of it being a little bit unpleasant is any sand that gets blown up into your bathing suit or just the one the sand in the wind blowing against your legs is going to be twice as bad, like scientifically. But I think like, emo- like actually for your body, it's going to be infinitely worse. Like, I don't know what the denominator is in that equation, but it's like a billion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the sand is going to suck. So it's like, okay, well, how about the water? Can we at least go in the water and swim around? Um, and so like Chris said, the... The way friction works in water, it's the viscosity of the liquid. So something very viscous uh, is going to be like more jello-ish compared to something very non-viscous like water. And my question was, could you go swimming? And finally, a another great what if show already beat us to it: um, the MythBusters. Mm, much more popular than us. <laughs> yeah, just a tad. For now. Just for now. Yeah. They're going to die eventually, and then we'll be more popular. Well, they already died. They already ended. So. Oh, well, great. Well, we can only catch up from here. <laughs> <laughs> we have a stationary target. Um, so according to the Mythbusters, Michael Phelps could physically swim in pancake syrup, which is 2,500 times more viscous than water. So if water is twice as viscous... You're going to be fine. <laughs> so to put it actually in perspective, um, milk has triple the viscosity of water. So mm. oh, okay. the ocean will be halfway between water and milk. Yeah, it's not as thick as I thought it would be. Yeah, I also imagined it being like, I imagined it being like pancakes here, but it's sucking a lot to go through it. Yeah. But no, it's actually pretty okay. That's not bad at all, yeah. And then I was like, all right, fine. It's, you can swim in it, but like, are the waves going to push you around? And um, looking at the physics on that one, the really the thing pushing you around with waves isn't really the the frictional drag force that's like pulling on like that pulls you. It's just like the normal force of it actually like pushing against you, like there being a bunch of water trying to go one way, and pushing on you straight on, which is different than friction. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be like a little harder, also because it's twice as viscous. It'll be a little annoying, but not something you can't handle. Right. So so far my beach day is kind of just a little bit worse, but there is one thing. Um, that does make it suck a bit more. Um, and that's going to be the waves. So the majority of waves are formed with because wind pushes along the top surface of the water. And so there's a transfer of energy from the wind onto the water through that process by, you guessed it, friction. Mm-hmm. And because the friction coefficient is actually is linearly proportional to the wind speed, the winds, the waves you get would basically be the same winds you get at double the wind speed that you're having. Oh. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. 
Well, how's our beach looking now? Um, um, so at small wind speeds, like day to day type stuff, um, you can you'll get normally like one and a half to three foot waves, and the way actual on the beach waves happen is a bit different than ocean waves. So um, I'm talking like. It's hard to say how big the wave on the beach is. It's pretty close, but it's a little bit less than these numbers. Before, just to preempt you before we get to the extremes. <laughs> right. Just so no one can call you out on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm hedging my bets. So average day, one and a half to three foot waves normally. Um, so these day-to-day -day waves are going to go from that to about two to five feet. So it's only a couple feet higher. So like a rougher day, but not bad. The thing is, the height of the wave is actually exponentially proportional to the wind speed. So that one is not linear. So as you get to higher winds, the difference between the double size, the difference between the double wind is higher um, proportionally. So if we have, say, a blustery summer day with 20 mile an hour winds, you're getting about five foot waves. But with double friction, you're looking at 12 foot waves. That's fun. <laughs> and 20 miles an hour is not like unheard of on a regular day. So you're already get starting to mess with people at the beach. Um, so now we get to the fun bit and we can start talking about uh, hurricanes. So to put it in perspective, the, the data I could find, so at category five, the wind speeds of a hurricane are topping about 160 miles an hour. So waves from hurricanes like this, based on the buoys they have out, average in the ocean 60 feet and co can go up to over 100 feet high, these waves, in, in a category five storm. So... These aren't the like I said. These aren't the ones hitting the shore, but these are just like in the middle of the ocean somewhere. They're just in the middle of the ocean, and for ships, they are that big and they're fucking crazy. <laughs> I saw some videos on YouTube, but wow. And so, which ones are hitting the shore? So, Hurricane Allen was a Category Five storm, and the waves hitting the shore were exceeding twenty feet, in addition to a nearly forty foot storm surge. So they're not that much less than sixty feet from <laughs> from where they normally are to the top. <laughs> So I really tried to find what the wave height would be if we had a Category 5 storm. But the program I found online for calculating wave height per wind speed actually stopped at that point. It wouldn't let me put any higher <laughs> numbers. It just said no. <laughs> and there was no data for anything higher than Category 5 storms because they don't happen very... They don't happen really. So the best I can say is a Category 1 storm would have the equivalent waves of a Category 5 storm. So basically anything above Category 2 or anything Category 2 and above will have bigger waves than any other previous hurricane that's happened. So we're kind of fucked and my beach day's a little bit ruined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't. I'm definitely not going to the ocean. <laughs> yeah, that would be a bit rough. Probably don't go out in a boat ever, I think is also pretty stay, valid. Stay away from water. Yeah, water seems not ideal. Move inland, and then you can find out what happens to tornadoes in double friction, because I didn't do that calculation. 